Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulkum. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to paint an Urukai Berserker. So the first colour we're going to use is Citadel Mornfang Brown. I'm going to use this to do all of the Urukai's skin. Now there are quite a few different ways that you can paint the skin. If you're watching the film you'll notice the Urukai have loads and loads of different skin tones. So choose one that you quite like the look of, go with that. Like when you're looking at the Urukai Scouts who capture Merry and Pippin, they have a very kind of mottled skin tone, and it shows you those close-ups of the faces and their arms. They have sort of patches of darker and lighter skin on them. So I think it really is up to you how you paint the skin, what kind of look you want to go for. So now we're going to use some Rhinoxide from Citadel. I'm going to use this to paint the leather, so he's got that kind of leather loincloth, and he's almost wearing sandals on his feet as well. It's a very, very quick and easy paint job, this. It doesn't use that many colours, and it is very, very fast to complete. So if you batch paint them, it's extra handy for that, which is what I'll be doing with the other berserkers that I've got. Now I'm going to use some Citadel Lead Belcher. I'm going to use this to paint his sword, his helm, and also the chain mail which he has behind the leather on his loincloth. Now, if you've not seen too many of the Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game miniatures, I was quite surprised by how small they are in comparison to the Citadel 40k range. They are a lot, lot smaller than them. There's probably a couple of pictures up on Instagram of comparisons. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Mephist on red, and we're just going to use that to do his mouth. I have to say, I'm not too keen on the casting of these guys. Picked up a pack of four, all of them have either little bubbles or the swords are pretty funky and point in all kinds of weird and wonderful directions. Next up is a little bit of Vallejo Black. I'm going to use this to paint his gloves. Once you've given them a nice smooth coat of black, you can move on to the next colour. I'm going to start doing the shades. I'm going to use Citadel Gorgrunter Fur to paint his skin. I like this because it kind of sinks in to the recess as well. It does do the job like a shade does, but it also gives a nice effect to the skin itself as well, I think makes it just ever so slightly shiny. It kind of blends it in quite nicely. I really do like using this contrast paint over the Urukai's skin. Now I'm going to use Sithel Nuln Oil Shade. Use that to paint all of the lead belcher on his sword and the chain mail. I'm not going to paint his helm with that because we'll be using a contrast paint for that. Also use this all over the rhinoxide too, so we'll give that a nice dark shade to it. Next up, it's Citadel Black Templar Contrast. I'm going to use this to paint the entire helm. What I like about this is, and I'll be painting the Urukai armor the same way. It gives you the black colouring for the helm, but it also lets you see the metal through it, like the metallic through the contrast, and it gives you that kind of worn and not quite a hundred percent black look to the armor plates. So now we're just going to use a little bit of Citadel Duty Violet to paint the inside of his mouth. Get a little bit of shade in there. And back to Citadel Mornfang Brown. 
going to start working on his skin again. So when you're painting the Mornfang brown, you want to be picking out those muscles, which are quite well defined on the miniature. And adding the colour back to the areas where the light is going to be catching him. So you think the top surface of the skin, you're not going to be using too much of this colour on the areas which are under the legs. Although they'll be catching a lot more shade. Next up, we're going to mix a little bit of Sithel Word Birders Red to the Mornfang Brown. I'm going to start highlighting the areas that we've just done with the Mornfang Brown. Now, adding a little bit of corn red to it does give it that slightly red tint that a lot of their skin has. See that's starting to come through now. Next up, we're going to mix in a little bit of Sithel Balor Brown. That's so we can start doing the lighter highlights to the skin. I'm not going to be going too wild with this. Just want to do small areas where it's going to be catching the light. You can see not too much time spent on this. It is a very, very quick layer, this one. Just finish that off with the model. I'm going to use a little bit more Rhinox Hide. I'm going to start reapplying the colour back to the leather. So that's his kind of sandals and also the loincloth that he's wearing too. Now I'm just going to mix in some Ballo Brown with the Rhinox Hide just to lighten that up again. I'm just going to highlight all the leather. Now because of the size difference between these and 40k I'm tending to use the Army Painter Wargamer character brush a lot more than I would do on a 40k miniature. Because even this second highlight I'm using that brush here. Just because the details are a lot smaller. Now I'm just going to add a little bit more Citadel Ballo Brown to the previous mix. I'm going to do one final little mainly edge highlight on the leather. I do want to keep these miniatures quite dark so I wasn't going really overboard in colouring the leather or anything like that. I know it's night time when you see them in the film but when you see the guys who are during the daytime they're always pretty filthy. So I figured that any clothing that they're going to be wearing is going to be pretty dirty too. Now I'm just going to be using a little bit of Vallejo German Grey. I'm going to use this to highlight his gloves. So again, not too much on this layer really. There's only the gloves, so it's not really that much that you need to paint for it. It's a very, very quick layer. Again, you want to be thinking about where the light's catching it, so on top of the creases, any ridges or details like that, you want to just make sure that they have a little bit of that German grey on there. Now we're going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Mechanica Standard Grey, and we're going to use that to do the final highlights on his leather gloves. So you're doing really, really thin highlights here on the fingers. Like so. Now I'm just going to use a tiny little bit of Citadel Ushabti Bone and we're going to pick out his teeth. There's a few of them visible there. 
just going to carefully put a little spot of paint on each one so it stands out. Like so. Now we're going to go back to the Citadel Lead Belcher. We're going to use this to gently dry brush some Lead Belcher over the helm. Now you don't want too much, just enough to give it that slightly metallic shine as it's been worn. It's not 100% black on there. Now we're just also going to use this to dry brush the blade. I mainly wanted to do it this way because I wanted to leave a lot of that shade in there. So it looks like it's been made in a not so good way. It's not going to have the blade clean and polished like any of the good side weaponry is. Next up is a tiny little bit of white. I'm going to start doing the white hand of Saruman on his armour. So we're just going to do one of these on his helm. With the Berserkers, you can do more of these on the body or wherever you want to do, to be honest. There's pictures with them pretty much all over, so however many or however few you want, the better. You can see here I've got quite a bit of paint on the brush. That's because when you look at how they're putting these hand prints on, they have loads and loads of paint on the hand. So it doesn't make thin, neat lines. It does make big splodges where those finger marks are. Now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of Black Templar just to touch up that hand print. I'm going to use a tiny little bit of white paint just to do some thin runs running down the side of the helm where that paint has been splattered on with someone's hand and has run down a little bit there. The final detail we're going to put on is using a bit of Citadel Blood for the Blood God. Now to get these guys into the Berserker Rage, they fill their lid up with blood and then tip it out over the head when you put the helm on and that sends them off into their rage. So we're going to be trying to put a helm's worth of blood on him. I've seen them where they're pretty covered, like the ones on the Games Workshop site, are pretty covered with it. But I was thinking they've got eye holes and ear holes in the helm, so it's not really going to hold that much blood in there. So I've done it sort of covering the shoulders and the top of the arms and then have runs run down the torso with it, maybe a few splats on the legs too. And this is the finished Urukai Berserker. Really pleased with how he turned out. I like the colours of them, I like the pose. Shame about the wonky sword, but cracking miniature nonetheless. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel, you enjoy the content, and you'd like to support us, our coffee and Patreon pages are linked below. Thanks very much.